online good morning wow so amazing to see some of us here for the first time in person this is wonderful and good morning to those on zoom as well uh, we welcome you as we gather as a spiritual family today so I'm just giving a little moment as people are coming in but for those of you here let's stand together we're gonna begin uh, our worship time together let's let's extend our hands to the father and we just say God is good in the midst of everything that is not good in the world we want to declare God is good and usually in our church you can de de repeat all the time so I'll say God is good all the time and I'll say all the time you say God is good praise the Lord amen so we're gonna to begin to declare how good you are God so we praise you for you are good God We're going to start at the chorus. We sing, God is so good. We sing, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so depth no height or depth can separate your steadfast love who can escape your faithfulness and endless sea so full of grace and mercy we sing been restored forgiveness flows from your veins your kindness shown in all your ways we sing God is so good God is one like you you are worthy you are worthy oh there's never been anyone like you never been anyone like you you are worthy you are worthy my hope is rising like the sun the old is gone, the new has come. I fix my eyes on Christ alone. My rock, my shield, my cornerstone. We sing, God 
is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Oh, there's never been anyone like you. Never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, there's never been anyone like you. Never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. We just say you're worthy, Lord. We praise you, God. You are so good to us, Lord. Even when things are not good, you are good. So we just declare, Lord, that's who you are, Lord. Let's sing together, He is good. We sing, God is so good. God is so to me even when I'm not good to you. God, you are good. God, you are good. God, you are good. You're so Even in the worst things this week, maybe in your school, the worst project happened. You say, God is good. Even in the family, you have the biggest fight. We say, God, you are good to them too. We sing again, you are so good, Lord. God, you are good. God, you are good. God. indeed God we declare that you are good and that is your nature that is who you are so as we worship today Lord as everyone comes from the busy walks of life we are gathered once again as a spiritual family so Lord for all of us here in person all online at home we pray your Holy Spirit fill us build our lives with your Holy Spirit because it is your spirit that gives us life. It is your spirit that gives us love. So work in us, stir in our hearts, we pray. Holy Spirit, amen. Worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. none beside you you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love 
to those around me. Worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Fill my life, Lord. I will build my life. I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation i will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken i will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation i will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken i will build my life upon none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me i will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation i will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken i will build my life upon your love it I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. We build our lives in you, Lord. Yeah, so Lord, we thank you that it's your love that is our foundation. Our foundation is not a building. It's not anything like that. Our foundation is in you, and you gather the family. So we thank you, Lord, that you gather us together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So together we're going to say our offering uh, verse together right now. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Malachi 3.10. And so normally, before COVID, this is our time to share the, bring the offering to the Lord. But because of the situation right now, we do have an offering box at the back that you can go fill out later because we just don't want everyone touching it all at the same time. So that's why we have a box at the back. Uh, so later on, you can go uh, put that in if you would like. Or to those online, you can give online uh, by credit card or you could drop off uh, or mail a check to us. And we just thank you for your hearts of generosity uh, to loving the Lord. So now where you want to welcome uh, one another, I just want to welcome, first of all, for those who are here, who, for those of you who are here, how many of you is the first time coming here since COVID? The first time coming back into this building since COVID? One, two, woo! Probably, yeah, many over five of you. That's wonderful. And so we want to welcome one another now and share God's peace because Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I don't give to you as the world gives. So let's go around and share the peace. Maybe some L bumps or uh, air high five. And to those online, peace be with you. And you can sit down. We're going to have a few announcements. So, oh, I forgot to, also, we want to welcome those who are here uh, to their community for the first time. And I, we want to welcome, is it Chris's sister is here from Hong Kong. So we welcome you. What is your name? Wai Ching. We welcome you, Wai Ching. It's so wonderful to have you here. Yeah, and if anyone online is new, uh, just type into the chat. We would love to welcome you, too. All right, so we will have a few announcements now. Let's go through the slides. Uh, the first one is that we've been doing something with the children called PPP, Play, Praise, and Pray. Uh, time to gather outdoors, have some games together. We have time to praise the Lord and pray together in very creative ways. And so that happens maybe once a month. And so uh, this time we're having it on Saturday, the coming Saturday at 1.30. And uh, the Sioux family has very graciously uh, hosted us and invited us to their backyard uh, to jump on their trampoline, play some games, pray together. So if you're interested, just let us know. All children and families are welcome to that. All right, next slide. Uh, so this is next week. We are having the family connection uh, after service at 2 on Zoom. The family connection, what it is, is basically a time for us to share updates of what's going on, this time particularly around the Bridgeport Business Center, the development going on there. Because right now our church has been giving offers to that uh, the seller there, and we've had some revisions, some back and forth. So we wanted to just update the church, share with you all the vision of what God is doing, so that we can pray together and seek his face together so that he can provide uh, the best for us. Our hope is not in a building, it's not in anything, but we pray the Lord will give us a space where his people uh, can flourish. So that'll be next week uh, at 2 o'clock. So after the Zoom service, you can have a lunch break and come back. Uh, so it will be the same link uh, as the worship link, I believe. So yeah, we'll post the links in case anyone misses it, but it will be the same link as worship. All right. Next one. Yeah, we've been looking for helpers to serve together. So as you can see, there's cameras. We need to teach people to operate. There's computers here on site. There's people at home uh, helping with Zoom recording, spotlighting, things like that. So if you're interested to help in any way, or even like welcoming Christina's and Shally and Yo-Yo have been helping with that. So if you're interested to help so we can have more rotations, please let us know. If you want to help with tech, let Abel and Gary know. Want to help with welcoming, uh, let Christina know. Uh, any other questions, let me know, and Pastor Josh as well. So we would love that. And worship, too. Let Athen uh, Olivia know. Uh, that would be great. All right, next slide. 
Yeah, so an update on uh, Pastor Gil, uh, Nasir Gill. He's the family that we've been uh, in the process of sponsoring. And so just this week, uh, he had a uh, basically a type of heart attack. And so there's a lot of things that happened. Maybe Pastor Josh will talk about it later when he's sharing. I think he will. But basically, he had a heart attack. He needed to go into surgery. And then there was issue of money. And how do we get money to him? It was crazy. But the Lord provided for him. And so I think Pastor Josh will tell that story later. So please keep praying uh, for Nasser, uh, Shaguf to his wife, and the whole family for what God is doing in this process of bringing them uh, into Canada as be beloved children of God. Okay, is there any more? Oh, so there's prayer ministry after the service. If you'd like to receive prayer, uh, maybe Josh and I will be by the, on the side, and we would love to pray for you afterwards. Uh, and there is communion today. So for those of us here, there are uh, little cups that Tabby will bring to you later. Um, for those of you at home, you can prepare your cracker, your bread, your, your wine, or your grape juice. I believe those are, are those all the announcements. Yes. Let us now stand together as we declare uh, the Apostles' Creed, which affirms our faith, points to the greater story of the Bible. Let us say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, please remain standing for the gospel of the Lord. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Tabby will read the gospel for us. Do you want me to start from the beginning? Sure. Okay. And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. If, you hand, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worms, their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourself and be at peace with each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay. Let's pray. Well, Lord Jesus, we confess that we are those people who have caused others to stumble and to sin. And God, we confess that we are people who haven't really done anything about it as well. So Lord, would you have mercy on us and forgive us and renew us where we need to return to you as we've been starting to look at in Zechariah. We need to return to you in our hearts to turn from the ways that we've been going and to turn into life with you. So Lord, would you lead us and would you guide us, we pray. Amen. Amen. For those of you here, you can grab a seat.
That gospel actually, I wasn't planning on talking about this, but that gospel is, um, is, is a key passage in my life. Uh, it came at a time of transition for me um, when I had been going through a lot of the motions of following Jesus, you know, serving in church and doing a lot of um, a lot of things in Christian fellowship and so on. But my, uh, I was under a lot of stress at the time and my life was sort of falling apart. My relationship of a couple of years was falling apart. Um, and I was at a retreat and I read this passage and I just completely broke down before the Lord uh, because, you know, in the story of David, when the prophet Nathan comes and confronts David and says, you are that man, this was the moment for me when the Lord said to me, you are that person uh, who causes little ones to stumble and it is better for them to have a millstone put around their neck and to be thrown into the water. And the water represents hell, Sheol, the deep, the void, away from God. And I was filled with grief in that moment of realization that that was who I was. And in some senses, that is still who I am. This process of dealing with our sins and coming before the Lord is not something that you finish once and then you're done with, but rather it's continually in your life. And so, yeah. Even as Tabitha read that, it just struck me that this is not something that is no longer relevant, um, but rather it's actually super relevant. And, and it really does connect with this book of Zechariah and the theme, the primary theme of the book of Zechariah around repentance and returning to God through, through the transforming of our character. And so we're gonna take a look today in the book of Zechariah at a couple of passages. I'm going to, I'll read them and summarize them there. They're, today we're gonna to be looking at two visions and um, Iggy talked a little bit about the structure of the book of Zechariah and there is an excellent Bible project video <laughs> which helps to summarize in very cogently and visually um, sort of the narrative or the structure of Zechariah. So if you want to check that out, I encourage you, you can go check out their videos on YouTube. They're quite well done. Um, but after the introduction, Zechariah has eight sort of visions, dreams that he has. And he shares these visions in order. And they sort of pair um, in a, would you say in a chiastic structure, or in a sort of they pair from out to in. That's what I mean. So if we're going to take a look at the first and last or eighth visions today. And, and I'm not going to spend tons of time, honestly, I'm not going to spend tons of time breaking down all the analysis of the visions, but rather just to reflect. And I do want to be able to share and connect my reflections with this past week. Let me pray before I read the scripture. Holy Father, we just come and we confess that we listen to so many voices. I confess that I listen to so many voices, but I often fail to listen to yours. So would you open up my heart, my ears, to hear from you and to listen to what you have to say. Holy Spirit, would you connect it, even as I preach it, into my own heart and into each of our hearts in a personal way that we might encounter you and leave the encounter transformed by your power. We pray this in your name. Amen. So Zechariah, if you want to follow along in your Bibles, feel free. We're reading a Zechariah 1, 8 to 17. Zechariah starts off and he says, During the night I had a vision, and there before me was a man mounted on a red horse. He was standing among the myrtle trees in a ravine, and behind him were red, brown, and white horses. And, and this man is an angel. So he asked, what 
are these, my lord? The angel who is talking with me answered, I will show you what they are. Then the man standing among the myrtle trees explained, the, they are the ones the Lord has sent to go throughout the earth. And they reported to the angel of the Lord who is standing among the myrtle trees. We have gone throughout the earth and found the whole world at rest and in peace. Then the angel of the Lord said, Lord Almighty. So the angel is both uh, able to be speaking with Zechariah, but it's also in the presence of the Lord. And so the angel, uh, sort of as an intermediary or as a representative, I suppose, calls out, Lord Almighty, how long will you withhold mercy from Jerusalem and from the towns of Judah, which you have been angry with these 70 years? So the Lord spoke kind and comforting words to the angel who talked with me. The, then the angel who was speaking to me said, Proclaim this word. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I am very jealous for Jerusalem and Zion, and I am very angry with the nations that feel secure. I was only a little angry, but then, but they went too far with the punishment. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will return to Jerusalem with mercy, and there my house will be rebuilt, and the measuring line will be stretched out over Jerusalem, declares the Lord Almighty. Proclaim further, this is what the Lord Almighty says. My towns will again overflow with prosperity, and my, the Lord will again comfort Zion and choose Jerusalem. And then I'll read the second, or sorry, the eighth vision now. This is from Zechariah chapter 6. And I, the vision goes from 1 to 8, but I'm just going to uh, touch on verses 9 and 10 as well. I looked up again, and there before me were four chariots coming out from between two mountains, mountains of bronze. The first chariot had red horses, the second black, the third white, and the fourth dappled, all of them powerful. I asked the angel who was speaking to me, what are these, my lord? The angel answered me, these are the four spirits of heaven going out from standing in the presence of the Lord of the whole world. The one with black horses is going toward the north country, the one with the white horses toward the west, um, and the one with the dappled horses toward the south. When the powerful horses went out, they were straining to go throughout the earth, and he said, Go throughout the earth. So they went throughout the earth. Then he called to me, Look, those going toward the north country have given my spirit rest in the land of the north. So basically, we have these two word pictures of horses and chariots, of being sent out, of being gathered back, of messages being declared. With a lot of these things, there, there can be a lot of analyzing of, of like super details. You know, what does red represent? What is this? Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get into tons of that. I don't want us to get muddled in trying to interpret every single detail. So I want to just sort of summarize and clarify a few things that will hopefully help us understand a little bit. The first thing is this. The idea of horses being sent out and coming back was part of the ancient like way that communication happened. Um, you guys have heard of the Pony Express in the United States, like that they would have riders who would pass on like, you know, the post and then they would like rush things. They had that actually in ancient empires. They had this equivalent in those times where, you know, I think in the book of Nehemiah, it actually talks about messages being sent back and forth between Nehemiah and um, the king. But they would have series of riders and you would ride a horse and then there were, you'd reach a riding post and then you would exchange horses. So you'd leave the horse and then you'd jump on the next horse and then you would, you know, you'd gun that horse, I guess, or ride it till it was super tired and then get to the next post and then you would you'd do that. And that was how you rushed messages through the kingdom, right? Because they didn't have telephones, they didn't have any electronic sort of things. If you wanted to get a message somewhere fast, it was by horse. And so that's, what that idea is around the horses, going out, figuring out what's going on, and bringing the news back. How can a king or an emperor or whatever in those ancient days have control or be able to respond to what's going on in his land? If there's an invasion, he needs to find out. If there's a rebellion, he needs to find out. And so that's the other thing. We see in Scripture several kingdoms that come through. The first kingdom, I suppose, that was a superpower was Assyria. And they came from perhaps Turkey or a bit north that way, and they invaded the northern kingdom of Israel, and they took them. And then we see after them the kingdom of Babylon, 
uh, perhaps modern day Iraq, they, they would come again through the north, they would come up the rivers and then down into Israel, and then they took over. And then after the, uh, so the kingdom of Judah, the southern kingdom was taken into captivity by Babylon. But after Babylon had been in rule for a little bit, Persia, uh, or perhaps Iran, modern day, um, took over from Babylon. And so we have this sort of a lot of uh, geopolitical upheaval, a lot of battles and so on. And because you're conquering other people, you also have to suppress the people if you're, if you're the conquering nation. And so there would be rebellions. There would be uh, you know, co armed conflict within the kingdom. And so the king, whoever was in charge at the time, whether it was Babylon or Persia or whatever, would have to send out messengers and, and they would come back and tell them of what was going on. And so, in this first vision, there is the word of peace. The land is settled. All uprisings have been quelled. There is peace. The world is at rest and in peace. And isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? We would love for our whole world to be at peace and rest right now, wouldn't we? I know I long for that. And yet, this was not satisfactory to God's people. This was not what they had hoped for because they had a sense of something bigger. They had a memory of a promise that God had made. That this peace was not true shalom, flourishing in life, but rather the suppression of all opposition. And so the angel calls out to the Lord, Lord Almighty, how long with you will you withhold mercy? In the midst of the semblance of peace, they knew something was wrong. There wasn't the wholeness that they were meant to have. They had been almost now 70 years in exile. People were starting to return, starting to rebuild the temple, but it had not ended the 70 years. And God had promised after 70 years you guys will get to go back and rebuild. But that had not yet happened. There was a remnant, but most of them were in exile. And so the angel cries out, sort of as a voice of the people, calling out to the Lord in his presence. How long? How long, God, do we have to wait I wonder if sometimes we feel like we are told that everything is good, but inside we feel it is not. You know, in a lot of cultures and in a lot of homes, there is the idea of presenting a certain appearance, right? We call it saving face don't disgrace your parents in front of other people you know you got to behave as if everything is good how many of you have experienced that conversation before you go out of the house <laughs> okay only of a few of you i see maybe it's not a spoken conversation yeah we're saving face right now good job everybody well done but inside it's like like there's there's stuff going on it isn't fully at peace. I'm not truly at rest. And maybe the truth is in this context, you feel like, well, I can't really be that way anyway, so whatever. And that's perhaps that's true. But the people and the angel speaking in this vision that Zechariah had, the people of God had received a promise and they knew, they believed, 
they hoped for something much greater, for something of life that would match the peace on the outside with the peace in their heart. When you are not at peace, what do you long for? What do you long for when you're not feeling peace in your heart? When you are sad, when you are frustrated, when you are angry, what do you long for? Anybody? Food. Okay, so Iggy, you care for him through cooking for him or feeding him. All right, anybody else? Sleep, sleep rest. Although sometimes you can't get that sleep. What else? Some of us might want a conversation to be heard or just to have somebody come and be with you so you're not alone. To be comforted. To, to feel loved. And the cool thing is, this is how God responds. So the Lord spoke kind and comforting words. This is verse 13 to the angels who talked with me. And the angel who was speaking to me said, proclaim this word. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I am very jealous. This word jealous is a word for passion, for zeal. I'm jealous for Jerusalem and Zion. I have so much passion for you. And I am very angry with the nations that feel secure, those who have come, who I allowed to enact my punishment because you needed to be punished. That was the consequence. I warned you over and over again, and you dwelt in sin. You stayed stuck in that, so there was going to be a consequence, and it came in the form of Nebuchadnezzar. I was only a little angry, the Lord says, but they went too far with the punishment. Sometimes when we have that upheaval, we want somebody to come alongside of us. You know, in, in Scripture, they talk, um, in, 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 sorry, in Genesis, at the very beginning, there's, there's the idea of um, Eve being the helper for Adam and the idea of the help being one who both faces off against you but also goes shoulder to shoulder with you and that word for helper is often used for god and god's relationship with his people and in this case i feel like god does that he comes and he says i am with you in this they have taken it too far i'm angry with you oh that's kind of a crazy thing to think about that God is angry, very angry. He says, hey, I was only a little angry, but then they went a bit too far with that punishment. They took it and they screwed it in a bit too much. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will return to Jerusalem with mercy, with compassion, with tenderness and love. And there my house will be rebuilt. And then at the very end, my towns will again overflow with prosperity and the Lord will again comfort Zion and choose Jerusalem. Zion being the mount upon which Jerusalem was built. God says he will comfort. He has compassion and mercy. He has zeal and passion. He is jealous for his people. He longs for them to return to him. They've been in exile for so long, 60 some years. And he makes promises. But you notice he doesn't say when and he doesn't say how. Do you notice that? Right? He makes the promises. And what do we sometimes do in our relationship with God? We hear his voice. He speaks clearly to us. But we take it, that one word, 
and we fill in the missing gaps with what we want. Do you ever notice that? And so when we read this, and I, I especially think for the people who would have heard Zechariah declare this, our immediate response would be to be like, oh, that's going to be soon, right? He's going to do it now. I'm going to be a part of that. But do you notice there is no clarification on when or how? Those are things that we immediately want to fill in. Well, they're going to rebuild the, the temple first, and then they're going to build the rest of the walls of the Jerusalem, and this is going to happen really soon, and we're going to do this, and God's going to give us the money and the people, and we're going to do this. And I just want to say this because we're going to have family connection both in the Chinese services after service today and next week. We're calling out a vision from God, and we have an idea of what it might be like but we also hold all of these things open to the Lord in our hands and say, okay, maybe it will be this way, but Lord, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? How are you leading us as a church into peace and rest? I can tell you that finances in this church are very stressful. We pay a lot of rent for this physical space that we use right now bi-weekly and not during the week that much. And that can be very frustrating. That can be very stressful. But God calls us to a different vision, a different hope of peace and rest. Because we know the bigger story, we know how it is resolved. Right? But in the moment, they didn't. But we know that this comes to a culmination, to a focus point in Jesus. We know that Jesus is the Messiah. That Jesus is the one who came to bring about God's kingdom. The already but not yet kingdom of God. It has already begun, but it is not yet fulfilled. He started that. He kicked it off. He, by leaving, we talk about this in the Apostles' Creed, when he ascended, he gave us his spirit to be with us. The spirit who can bring you true, deep peace in the midst of worry, anxiety, stress. And boy, are we covered with all those things. Not just because of COVID, but just because of regular life. Even without COVID, we had all these things. How do I get through school? How do I deal with that teacher? Mr. Chan is my teacher and he is awful. How do I get through that class? I'm just kidding. How do I earn my next paycheck? Where is my next paycheck going to be? How do I pay my rent or my mortgage? Who will be my friend? I feel lonely. And I just want one person to play with me. That was my son's call. I don't have any friends, Dad. And so he's been going off to preschool, and we've been encouraging him to build friendships at preschool. But these things weigh on us. whether you're in preschool or you're a grown person, these are things that are in our hearts. But do we put our hope and trust in the Lord? Do we go to the one who has compassion and mercy and passion for us and ask him to comfort us, to lead us into his peace and rest? God knows and he cares. So when Zechariah sees this vision, what I want us to key on is who God is in the midst of that. He is the God who has compassion and mercy for you. He is the God who wants to comfort you. 
He is the God who is angry at injustice that is done to you. And he is the one who will set things right in a way that you can't even ask or imagine. It will be better then. Sometimes it's awkward, sometimes it's stressful, but when we push through with God, he leads us into his peace and rest. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we just say we cannot possibly do the things of your kingdom without your help. We cannot be a united church that is one in its love for each other and for you without your help. We cannot be whole in our, peop- in our personhood. We cannot be whole in our families without you. God, we cannot face the stresses of life, of school and of work, of relationships or singlehood, of children or not. We cannot face any of those things without you. Because, Lord, when we try to do them in our own strength, in our own wisdom, our ways are so small compared to yours. So, Lord, would you open our eyes to a vision of you and of us as a church and as your people where we look and we have a different perspective that we would begin to see with your eyes the possibilities of new friendship, of not being alone, of receiving your abundant provision, of healing of our wounds, physical and emotional, relational, within ourselves and within the communities to which we belong. So come, Holy Spirit, come. Be in the middle of all of us. Be in the middle of our circumstances. Lead us and guide us to your hope, we pray. Amen. Amen. And we just want to continue in prayer for our community and the world. So let's pray. Uh, first for Nasser and his family. Father, we pray for Nasser and Shagufta, Balawal, Amen and Genesis. We pray for their family. We thank you for your hand on them, that you have not left them alone. So we pray that you would continue on this journey to bring them home to you, first of all, and to bring them here as well to Canada, where they may resettle in your land and your promise. So, Lord, would you lead them. And, Father, we also pray for our church family, this spiritual family that we have, that we have a privilege to gather together to go play together, to worship together. We pray for the uh, upcoming season in which we are discerning your vision for us to perhaps purchase the building at Bridgeport, to create a holy place, a peaceful place, a restful space where your people can thrive. So we pray for that, for the communication today uh, in the Chinese uh, family connection, for the Next week, as we have our family connection online, we just really pray, God, you would begin to reveal in our hearts, each one of us, Lord, your vision for this church, how you will bring about peace, how you will bring about rest, how you bring about healing. So come, Lord, lead us, your church, lead our community, lead our nation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to be preparing uh, for communion as we uh, share in the prayers together. So we'll go to the next slide. And so, would you stand now as we pray our prayer confession? Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Give us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. 
May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to prepare for the communion now, and Tabby will come around and bring us the communion. Could you bring one up to me too, Tabby, as you bring around to everyone? Uh, those of you at home, you can just get yourself ready uh, with the elements as we celebrate the Eucharist. All right, let us respond. Is the Father with us? He is. is Christ among us? He is. Is the Spirit here? He is. This is our God, Father, Father Son, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. We are his people. We are Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, living God, supreme over the world, creator, provider, savior, and giver. From a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you have sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving us your only son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. And... Every, you could do this at the very end if you don't want to hold it for too long. But he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. His body was broken for us. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We are brothers and sisters through his blood. We have died together. We will rise together. We will live together. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our brother, Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. Jesus is Lord. This is the feast of victory. The Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Hallelujah. As Jesus taught us, we now pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So now you may take your elements. Uh, if you've not been baptized, you may receive prayer here. Or if you'd like to receive prayer, we'll be there as well. All right, let's receive.
Yes. All right, let's pray together in our thanksgiving. Let's respond. Let's pray together. Almighty God, Holy Father, we have sat at your feet, learned from your word, and eaten from your table. We give you thanks and praise for accepting us into your family. Send us out with blessing to live and to witness for you in the power of your spirit through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Amen. Let us point to the cross. All our problems, we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties, we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works, we send to the cross of Christ. And all our hopes, we set on the risen Christ. Christ, the Son of righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's declare he is the king. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the To reveal the kingdom come and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our Savior died. was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born then the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of all shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me.
church receive this blessing. May we be people of God whose hope in God gives us a new vision, a greater vision of peace and rest. May we extend that peace and rest to our families, to our co-workers, to our neighbors, that they might glimpse and taste that God is the one who has compassion upon them and us who comforts them and us, who is angry at injustice against them and us, and who lifts us up into hope because Jesus has come and because God's kingdom has begun. Amen. Amen. Bless you to go into this week with God. Amen. If you would like to receive prayer, you can stick around yep. and we'll pray with you.